I just want to know why you are so bubbly and ha I can, there's something going on. You are extra happy. Don't skip my joke. I said, I haven't seen you since last year. I can only use it today. Oh man. Well, you're, but you're, you're too smart. It's above me. <laughs> We're right over here. It's my favorite joke. I've got like one week to use it. Um, I, you know what? I don't know why I'm like this. I'm just excited about the new year. I'm excited about our panel. I'm excited about our show. How have you been? How was your New Year's? What'd you do? Uh, it was good. You know, we uh, we stayed up till nine o'clock with my three year old, and so we we did. Uh, I think a new trend is we you know we YouTube the countdown for for little ones and pretend that that it goes live. How was how was your New Year's? It was really good. So we mine are bigger; they're fourteen and eight. So we went with a friend to Lowe's downtown, the new hotel. They have an oh indoor. Oh my gosh! Pool. Yeah. They have an indoor pool. So we did a pool, hot tub, and then we went back and played board games and did the New Year ball and everything up there. Overlooking Kansas City, we got to watch fireworks and stuff. It was a lot of fun. That's wonderful. You're always so smart and creative uh, with everything that you do. So that's pretty well, cool. Listen, you got to do a lot of staycations right now. Yeah, I'm just impressed that I feel like we're a talk show and you wrote the joke of see you next year. So I feel like we're, we're really enhancing everything. Uh, for the work that we do at Bank of Blue Valley. I'm, I'm going to pretend like we had writers write that joke. Uh, I did play this game this week. I uh, have been part of this mentorship program through Square One Library, and they had a game for the last time, and I won the dad joke category. So Woo! if anyone needs dad jokes right here. How excited? I am so excited because Bank of Blue Valley is with us again in 2021. Well, Wendy Reynolds and, and obviously our team with Sean and Felicia uh, just love working with them. And I think they just are unique. They truly care about the community and, and investing and, and not just the, the big businesses or the bread and butter privately held. They really connect to all businesses. And it's so cool that as we do the show, we run into people all the time like, oh, I'm Bank of Bank Blue Valley. And so it's, uh, it's cool that we continue to get to know more about each other all the time, but always really good things. And then Wendy Reynolds is uh, someone that you really like a lot and you admire. I know I do. She's one of my faves. I will tell you too, I saw that they have some careers over on their career page. So make sure you go check it out, especially if it's a new year, maybe a new job, a wonderful company to work for. Michelle Prim, you can connect with her over here on LinkedIn as well. And she kind of helps get people in interviewed or well, the, all the HR stuff. I don't or know. yeah, or they can reach out to us directly and then we can put them in touch with any opportunity that they're interested in. Absolutely. Okay. Let's get started. Cause we have a fat, this is a great panel real quick. Last week's show. Phenomenal. Uh, so I was overwhelmed. I mean, I was just, thank you for um, using your influence and your relationship with the legendary uh, Mr. Les, because I, I, I mean, if you just Google inspirational speeches, that's what comes up on Google. So he is world renowned. And I just was just blown away that like every 10 seconds he was oh. hammering nuggets of inspiration. And then I realized, oh, he's done this for decades. <laughs> for, for a little bit. Well, you know, I thought it was going to be hard to, to do a show after that. That wasn't so great. But we we pulled together a pretty amazing panel today. So I'm very excited about this new year and this show. So are you ready? Should we bring them in? Let's go. All right. All right. Let's see. It's an all ladies panel too. Did you notice that? Oh right. yeah. I got I got the I got the smooth jazz. Saying? I can't tell you because I don't want to get in trouble with uh, our audience. We're not we have to pay for the music now. We've gotten too big. <laughs> all right. Well then let's just start like this. Our first guest today is Miss. 
Tiana C. Ah. And I'm gonna let her say her last name because I always mess it up. Say your last name. Mabry Van Deren. Good job. Our first guest is Timor. And last, but certainly not least, Christiana Muniz. Hi. Hi, guys. You know, the instrumental version of A Whole New World is a lot slower than what you would think in your head. So I apologize. I, I thought it was going to be upbeat. I'm a big Aladdin fan. Uh, Devin was in Aladdin last year. We missed those. We missed those programs. We missed those. All right. Well, let's just get started. We have such an amazing panel. We already have people jumping on here. Get on here. Tell us who you yeah. came to see. Say hello. And we've got Lene. She's got a great lineup. We've got Jessica. She's good. You guys are a talk show of wonderfulness. She said she didn't recognize Scott without you. Oh, why aren't you in the bathroom, Scott? The kids are back at daycare. It's huge. And and my wife, Julie, tries to, she comes on the show right when it's important and she tries to crinkle things. So, you know, there's no children. No. So it's a big deal. It's a big deal. Well, Angie misses the bathroom. And then Mickey said last week was fantastic. Thank you, Mickey. He actually sent me an email about that. So that was really sweet. So, well, this week's going to be just as fantastic. So let's jump into it. Let's start with who are you? What do you do? How do you get to Kansas City? And why are you here today? Miss Kiana, let's start with you. Yeah, well, thanks so much to you, Aaron, and to and to Scott for having me and to be a part of this amazing panel with so many other strong women uh, that are known here in Kansas City. Uh, my story coming to Kansas City is very unique. I was like coincidentally here on an academic scholarship. I'm not from here. Um, and they said, hey, Kiana, we need you to come back here to give uh, all your community service and your uh, time in building relationships here as us giving you money to go to college. And so I was coming back and forth to Kansas City um, and the Brand Myers, shout out to them, Second Chance Scholarship. And, and they have graciously every single year um, has supported me. And so that's kind of how I got to Kansas City. And like most, I fell in love with it and haven't looked back since. And so a lot of people look at me now and they're like, well, how do you know everybody? And a lot of these people knew me before uh, building my brand and just grateful to, to be in front of just ahead of time, I guess at 25 and it's been a, it's been a fun ride. Yeah, it always blows my mind that you're 25. <laughs> Got it, Tiana, Tiana, where, where are you originally from? And then you have a podcast as well. And how did people learn about your podcast? Yeah, uh, originally from Jonesboro, Arkansas. Uh, so if you know where Little Rock is, that's where you can find me an hour away from there, hometown. And my podcast, Up Next with Kiana, super excited about that. Getting ready to release some exciting news here pretty soon. Um, you can find me on Facebook. Anyone that you can think of in Kansas City uh, has been on the podcast, actually our very own. Uh, that's on here, Deanna. She's been on as well. And so uh, just grateful um, that that took off during the pandemic. And we had a lot of conversations about race, diversity, equity, and inclusion um, in the wake of all the things that happened in 2020. So looking forward to this year and what will um, be on the horizon. Well, we're so super excited to have you on here. Miss Katie, tell us, I am always blown away when people don't know you. And I think sometimes <laughs> that that's so, I'm so in the business side of things. And you are one of the biggest deals, I think, in Kansas City. So tell people who you are, what you do, and how you got here. Um, thank you. That was way too kind of you, Erin. Hi, friends. Um, I'm Katie Mabry Van Deren, and I own and curate a maker fair in town called the Strawberry Swing Indie Craft Fair, as well as shoplocalkc.com, which is a website with more than 350 local makers where you can buy their handmade items all literally in Kansas City, which there isn't any other like that here. Um, and what else do I do? Oh, I'm the co-founder of Truce Market Collective and Truce to Palooza. And we recently did the KC Art on the Block, the six Black Lives Matter murals, as well as we did a Black artist pop up on the plaza during the Plaza Art Fair, which was incredible. And uh, I think that's all I do. Craft show success. I also have a little membership um, where we teach makers how to make money doing craft shows and selling online virtually. So I'm basically a cheerleader for makers and any kind of artist, as you can see. Behind me, I have a lot of art and craft supplies, so I cheerlead for the makers. And besides Les Brown last week, Katie, 
the biggest influencer as, as social followers that we've ever had on the show. Oh, There's wow. So Thank people you. People and Deanna was in my last fair. So hopefully we had to talk about that. I'm so excited that Midwest Chicana was just in our holiday swing. Awesome. Well, I want to know, kind of, like, the social media, how many followers do you have and what oh. do you think is the key to your success on the following? Because I don't know these things. Aaron always knows them. Well, you have to join Craft Ship. Just kidding. Um, I think that I got, it's really like, a, I have a huge community of makers, so I'm not just sharing about myself ever. I mean, I'm I am sharing about myself too because people want to know you. Um, but I'm sharing all of the makers and the artists, and so people love that. And I'm just being authentic, speaking from my voice. I'm a mom. You'll probably see children. They're gonna get home from their first day of school today. I didn't sleep very much last night because I was nervous about, you know, the pandemic and children going back to school. So they'll probably come running behind me at some point. But I just try and be authentic and share. I've been screaming to shop local KC since 2011. And now I feel like the pandemic is horrible. And I know it's really hurt a lot of small businesses, but it's also helped what I do because people are now understanding why it is so important because they're seeing things close and restaurants, all these local businesses go under, even like non-local ones. If you go down to the plaza, you will see so many stores have vacated. Um, and it's so important to shop local and support our local small businesses and all of our people here. So I don't know. I'm just able to follow them that way. You can answer your follower question. I know. Oh, I've just built it that way, I guess. I think people just want to follow no, us and find the resource. Um, yeah. And it's I, I thousands like and thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands. Of I'm good at copywriting because I have a degree in journalism. Maybe that's what I like studied in school. And I love photos and beautiful things. So I Instagram especially is really photo, you know, friendly. So I like sharing all the photos and stuff. It's fun. She's fun to follow. So follower, tell us what your yeah. handle is. Okay, so I'm Strawberry Swing KC on Instagram, Strawberry Swing Craft Fair on Facebook, and then you'll be able to find all my other things through that because I have little links to them. Oh, I am. Hi, Brian. <laughs> on the show. <laughs> He's the awesome. He's awesome. Yes, I'm a Bishop Yes. Oh, I'm from here. I'm from Kansas City. So that was one of the questions. I'm born and raised here. I started on the Kansas side. Um, went to Bishop Yes with Brian. Went to K State. Wildcat, and then moved to Missouri as soon as I graduated. Well, I actually moved to New Zealand, France, lived around the world a little bit. But as soon as I came back here and settled, I've always lived in Kansas City, Missouri, and have not yet gone back to Kansas side. Well, you're welcome back anytime. <laughs> <laughs> I might have to come back because they're getting a little more democratic than we are over here now. Um, <laughs> Miss D, who are you? What do you do? And how do you end up here? Oh, okay. So let's start with, uh, my name is Dee Moore and I am the director of marketing for Friend That Cooks, but I also do branding and marketing for a couple of local influencers and companies behind the scenes and I do projects. So how did I get to KC? I came here because of extended family, but the thing that got me here was September the 11th. I was a mutual fund broker numbers, heels, you know, purses, um, crunching everything that a business person will do. Well, right before September the 11th, I had my third child who was a girl after having two boys and um, that rocked my world. First, the company told us, hey, we are not going to lay off anyone. We're going to make this work. You know, a month later, um, our weekly lunches and buffets got cut out. Then the pens and the papers got cut out. And I was like, uh oh, I think I need to. So I had had a camera that I would photograph my kids with and I was photographing people for free. So I decided to charge someone $40. And then the company came and asked us to volunteer to be laid off. And uh, I was two minutes behind the time that you could go up to the uh, sky high HR department and tell them, okay, I volunteer to lay off because I was still trying to decide, was I going to do this? Was I not going to do this? And so I took the long uh, flight up, you know, 20 something floors and walked in and I was like, oh, I want to be laid off. And they were like, no. So my boss was like, no, you're one of my best employees. You're bringing the top money. So I go home and I said, oh yeah, well, guess it wasn't meant for me to be laid off. I'll stay. 
the next day I got back to work, my boss said, well, you know what, if it was in your heart to not stay, then I can't keep you. You won't be here. So that started the transition to what do I do now? Because I have a camera and all of my coworkers were like, are you crazy? What are you going to do? Well, I was like, I'm used to eating beans and rice and I'll make some oodles and noodles and I'll figure it out. I don't need money. I have ideas. Um, so I packed up two vans and a Jeep Cherokee and came to Kansas with a dream to be a photographer. A year later, I was in the Kansas City Star for running one of the biggest photography businesses. And then, um, and I had five goals. And uh, then I started teaching other people years ago how to grow their photography businesses, taught about 300 photographers. And it turned into branding, marketing, building websites, all from photography pretty impressive. You said I'm used to eating beans and rice. I love that quote. Yeah. So I'm the queen of pivoting. So this this uh, pandemic was nothing to me. I've, I've slept in my car. I've had to go in, you know, to interviews from nothing and still smile and make it look good. I can make a dollar look like a million dollars. So yeah, pivoting is the key. Yeah, I always think it's interesting for we have a lot of we have a lot of senior leaders that watch the show, but we also have young people that watch the show. And to all the young people, if anyone ever says no one's going to get laid off, that's that's code word for a bunch of people are about to get laid off. So, yeah, uh, we went from like 20 hours. Yeah, the company was slowly when the pens and the pencils, let me tell you, when they stopped ordering the pens and the pencils, because we got the best pens and the pen When the pens and the pencils went down to nothing, I was like, nah, this is not it. So you have to be, and even in business, you have to have the instinct and the gut instinct and the intuition to know to move before it happens, move before the curves. Don't wait for it to happen to you. You got to know when to get out. And I was getting out, not because I wasn't comfortable, but because I knew it was going to get uncomfortable. The pens and the pencils. That's so funny. When this pandemic started, somebody told me to check my office orders. <laughs> I was like, "We're not. We're not in the office." <laughs> so let's right. do the thing. Old school business. The pens and the pencils. Right. Well, we are right. happy to have you. We are so. What a good, incredible story, Miss Deanna. Let's move on to you. Who are you? <laughs> what do you do? And how do you get here? Hi, um, first of all and foremost, thank you so much for having me. I've been watching the show uh, since you guys started and uh, learned a lot from a lot of different community members and leaders and corporate, not for profit. So I just thank you for this platform and for me to be on it with these amazing women that I look up to uh, so much. Uh, everything that, they, that they've said is so inspirational. Um, I uh, just left my career at Hallmark for 15 years. So I am a uh, unemployed at this point, but I am the CEO founder of Latino Arts Foundation. Um, that's been a not for profit about almost two and a half years. I'm also the founder of the Latino Arts Festival, which will be in its fifth year in 2021. And I just started a Midwest Chicana brand, which um, began with uh, just doing some craft stuff with my kids at home, um, now has turned into jewelry, um, earrings specifically, and started um, getting some partnerships with some people that are doing some retail and some pop-ups. So um, as Katie said, I was a part of her amazing show. I learned quickly. I think I put myself into a show that was probably way over my head <laughs> than what I expected. But I, everybody was there was so kind and amazing and so helpful. I learned so much. So I feel like I can do anything at this point. So Katie, thank you for opening the door to so many makers, which is a new world for me when it comes to that part of it. Um, but I'm a big supporter of art, um, artists, especially our youth artists, um, our Latino community. Um, I have a podcast that I actually stopped doing um, once I lost my mom and my brother. I'm hoping to get back into that in 2021, but um, it is definitely to bring out the voice of the Latinx uh, community here in Kansas City, um, especially when it comes to our entrepreneurs. We have a lot of entrepreneurs that need to be seen and uh, we're not seeing them. So uh, we've got to get their voices out and get them on shows like this. So I just appreciate you having me today. We would yes, love for you to send you. their names to us too. We'd like to feature them here too. Absolutely. Okay, can you also tell people, a lot of people probably recognize you, but I don't think Scott knows this, so this will be fun. 
what show were you featured on a whole show about you last year? Uh, yes. So, uh, and Dan Smith will probably be like, oh gosh, here it goes. Cause he's always doing this to me. Uh, Queer Eye. I was Queer Eye season four, episode six, Tale of Two Cultures. Um, I was a featured uh, hero, which was uh, actually what uh, spin, springboard me into becoming a not-for-profit uh, and uh, has, has been going since then. You have to go back and watch it, Scott. It's a really good one. See, I'm so behind the times. When Queer Eye came out, it was like the, like, it was the, it, it was the it show. And now you have to go to, I, I, I mean, with kids, it just totally has smashed my TV watching, but I just got done with watching Fargo because I'm a huge history nut for Kansas City. And the next thing to watch is I'm anything Kansas City is I need to watch Queer Eye because a lot of our friends obviously have been featured. So super excited. What say what, what episode again? Uh, episode six. And everybody on that um, season, even the seasons before and after are phenomenal. Everyone is just amazing. So yeah, definitely. If you haven't seen any of them, please check them out. You have to go check it out. So yeah, Fargo, did you guys know this? Has everybody seen Fargo yet? I did not know that the credit card was invented by a black man in Kansas City until I watched Fargo. Right. See, you can learn stuff when you watch TV. You they do a great agree. job with the historical architecture. So when you see the show uh, Fargo, it is what it looked like in Kansas City. And, and uh, you know, we talk a lot about, I think we talked a little bit about 31st and Truce and uh, where the Ninger Leagues Baseball Museum, 18th and Bind. And so there was a segregated part of the city and uh, it goes into detail in terms of what that is. So if you're history nut, and you're listening, you, you'll pick up on it just like uh, I'm assuming when I watch Queer Eye, well, you'll see a lot of uh, local spots. So it's, it's very Kansas City us. Where did they film it though? Not here. No, they didn't film it here. I don't, I don't know. Atlanta. I mean, they have like bl the blue, you know, the green screen where you clearly can it's tell it's not. Like it. Yeah, like but they. Like market, those buildings, those old planter buildings, that's where yeah. a lot of it happens. It looks just like it. Uh, I do want to jump in over here. Mike Meyer said he, that, Band of Angels is so excited to have Deanna Muniz. Kiana, I think you did it the same year me and Scott did it too, right? So cool. Yeah. You get, Mike, you better hit up D and Katie next. <laughs> uh, and we've got a ton of people over here. Leave your comment. Tell us who you're excited to see. But what I want to do, we're going about to do another round of questions. Ask your questions now because we got a ton of comments on here. Last week, we had people asking questions after we were logged off. So ask your questions now <laughs> so we can get to them. Uh, 2021, the most important year, and loves Kiana. So Kiana, we're gonna get over here to you. What was your biggest win of 2021? Wow, um, <laughs> talk about hard, I guess, question. There are so many things in 2020 that happened to me. I could start with just where I'm at now here at the Nigger Leaks Baseball Museum. Um, when I think about you know, everything that we're going through, Kansas City, you will never find another city that has such historical assets in one district within a one mile radius of each other. So we also be very proud of the implementation that is on a national scale that's displayed 20 to 35 minutes from wherever you are and wherever you live in the city. Um, I would have to say that, but most importantly that stands out is getting the National uh, Women in Business Stevie Award. Um, mm -hmm. I think for me, um, and, and saying that, kind of goes directly to what Dee just kind of mentioned. You know you know what it's like to sleep in your car. You know what it's like to, to make it work. And I think for me personally, you know, going after your dreams as a, as a woman of color and all those things that we know to be true, yeah. but it really goes to show that when you put passion in front of, in the forefront of what you do, um, just incredible things happen. And so I think for me, that's just a confirmation of just continue to just be you. Um, I'm still learning. I still got a lot to learn, a lot of life to live but we're just getting started. And I think that was the highlight of, of 2020, 2020 for sure. That's a pretty, I know now we're in 2021. How's this work? Yeah. I gotta get a highlight of 2021. <laughs> Congratulations. I saw that on social. So Kiana also, you've got, you've popped your following during this as well. Thank you. All right, Miss Katie, talk to us about your win during 2020. Um, well, I was featured in Inc. Magazine, which is like, one of the biggest publications I've ever been featured in. I actually didn't even know about it until I was called by the editor to be interviewed, but um, it has like millions of followers on Facebook and Instagram and is a small business magazine and they featured me for my pivot. So um, like D, I am a woman of pivoting and 
I am creative, so I can see how to change things very quickly. And so my pivot was to start Shop Local KC. And in like 48 hours, I quickly went through, I mean, I have like thousands of makers on my email list that have participated in my fairs, but I really didn't know if we would be able to have a fair again in 2020, back in Feb March, February, when this started. And so I put them all on this website and saw that would be my way to support them all. And so there's I mean, as many as I could <laughs> in that 48 hour period by myself. I now have people helping me, thankfully, to get more people on it. But yeah, we have this huge website now. And then being in Ink Magazine for that pivot, I went virtual and I was one of the first people to have a virtual craft show using this really cool um, software called Booth Central, a company that's actually in the Midwest. Um, and that was really neat because we were able to have a live kind of what we're doing now, I used StreamYard and we were able to be live and then the vendors all had booths underneath. And so I did that twice. And then my last thing, I, the biggest pivot was the outdoor holiday market that Deanna was a part of. And um, so I basically just threw Kansas City's first outdoor holiday market. And it was incredible. We had fabulous weather. I do not know how this happened because normally it rains every event I ever have, but it didn't rain at all. We did four weekends starting small business Saturday, going all the way up to the 20th of December. And we were outside of Union Station. And I, so normally I have 160 local small businesses in the event. Last year, Kansas City spent about 1.2 million strictly at these 160 businesses in that two days I did it last year inside Union Station. So it's a huge chunk of their income. Some of these makers are making $13,000 at my event. And so I just knew I had to do it. So I went outdoors. I got my plan approved by the Missouri Arts Council first. They really helped me figure out how to do a COVID plan. So I required masks outside, which a lot of people thought was funny, but I was just too nervous to not have masks, even though we were outside because of the vendors. Like you're going, like maybe the audience, the guests aren't interacting with each other, but the vendors are there constantly seeing all those different people come up to them. So we did masks and then we ticketed it and we had them fill out a COVID screener, which some people actually only like two out of 14,000 people complained about it, but it was just the same thing you would fill out if you went to the doctor, like, do you have a fever? Have you been exposed? So it was perfectly safe. We had nothing bad go wrong. Thank God. Hey, good job. And I think can't, I haven't calculated it yet because I've been trying to take a staycation or get away. Like Aaron, you were talking about like going to the hotel and swimming. We're going to do that this weekend because I just worked my booty. I almost said a bad word booty off um, trying to pivot and help all these makers. So I haven't calculated it yet, but I think Kansas City probably topped that 1.2 million and supported. We had 40 vendors each weekend and they rotated in and out. So like some of them did it every weekend, but most of them switched in and out. So we helped the same amount of vendors, which was awesome. Guy has a question. He's dying to ask. Sure. Okay. Do you, do you, like you, you have too much going on, but we got to be quick. Okay. Um, I am blown away that you helped put together along with a partner, the murals for black live black. Oh, oh, yeah. so, and if you can do like 60 seconds, okay. uh, you know how that came together that yes, is sure. cool. i have no idea how you have time in the day to do what you're doing well my partner chrissy bastrop so i have a nonprofit i co-founded called truce market collective and as a white woman i have learned a whole lot about racial justice in the last four years that i didn't know and so i've been trying to use my platform as a privileged white woman with the strawberry swing to you know See, I saw that there was a barrier to entry for artists and makers. There weren't a lot of makers from East to Troost applying to Strawberry Swing. And I'm like, why is this? What? And so long story short, we started the nonprofit, Chrissy and I. Um, we're going to be at 31st and Troost and have a maker space. It will be free for artists that live East of Troost. So until we can get in that space, because the buildings, as you know, from seeing Fargo, that 31st and Troost area has been completely ignored for like the past 20 years. And actually, if you go to www.exploretruce.com. We did a project where we have the whole history, starting with the Osage Indians going to present of that block. Um, but we've been doing programming. So 2020, George Floyd is murdered. We've been like screaming at the top of our lungs, buy black, support black artists. What can we do? We've already done a mural project. All these other cities are doing murals. Can we use our privilege and our voices to hire black artists, pay them and show Kansas that Kansas City cares that Black Lives Matter. So Chrissy, my partner, Chrissy Dastrup, she did most of the legwork of this. So yay, Chrissy. She works for Eric Bunch as his legislative aide and was able to get the city on board, um, pass an ordinance. The city council members, I think all 12 of them, 
or maybe 11 out of 12 voted yes, let's do this. And we completely raised all the funds ourselves through Truce Market Collective. So no city money was involved. It was wow. all through our nonprofit. And we partnered with the Urban League um, and the NAACP too. So they really helped us. Um, and we chose seven black artists from the Black Place Black Art. Natasha Ria helped us with that. She has a gallery. Oh, there's a child. And our board member, Michael Toombs, he was one of the muralists. And then six muralists designed the, um, there's another child, designed the amazing murals and Kansas City showed up. We had a volunteer form. I mean, we couldn't even allow everyone that wanted to help help because of COVID. You know, we were only allowing a hundred people at a time on each mural. So I was in charge of the 31st and Truist one, project lead, not in charge, but project lead. So I helped organize all the volunteers and everything. And we just, together as a community painted and painted and painted and all the people that help like the architecture firms that spaced it out like what you're probably thinking is how did you guys even do it like the letters that we had amazing architecture firms in town you can see it on our social media which ones there's so many that helped they came out and like did the actual technical part of chalking it and then you know we just told people what to do we said paint this color here paint that color there it turned out so amazing. Okay, We're going to jump over wonderful. here to see, Katie, we could have done a whole show with what you've been doing during the right, yeah. So go make sure you connect with Katie. D, what was your biggest win during what a crazy year we had? Um, Three real quick. And I tell personal things because I know it's a lot of people when we're all on uh, a show or anything or talking to other people, we're telling our best stories, our best accomplishments. One of my biggest accomplishments was um, kind of breaking a financial barrier. I feel like I've lived a long time of just trying to be humble. Um, so in 2020, in the first week of 2020, I wrote down an amount that I wanted to accomplish. And um, I hit that mark even during a pandemic mid-year and it felt like I was breaking some chains. Um, through the law of attraction, once something, one thing good happens, it starts attracting other good things. And so I had a couple of people reach out during the pandemic. One of my biggest accomplishments was helping Mizzou College, Mizzou Alumni Association, run their social media uh, because I plan events with them as well, but running their social media during the pandemic to keep the community engaged. Then the last thing was realizing that, um, me, like many women, this is not just me, many women, many mothers, we always put people first. We are born with a service nature, um, honoring, uplifting, and putting other people first, and then crying in the background like, why not me, why not me? So at the end of the year, two months ago, um, joining the mentor group and my mentee not showing up made me put some focus on myself. So I wrote my book. It is finished. It is with the editor and I will be um, putting my book on Amazon with 20 ways that women can make money at home with no money starting up. Oh, I like it. You'll have to send it to us when you do it. Congratulations. We've had a lot of, we're kind of turning into an author talk show. We've had a lot of authors. Yay. D, one, one thing is when someone walks into your office and said, no one's going to be laid off, people are getting laid off. If you make money in a pandemic like clockwork, you are going to crush it in 2021. So I uh, I think the, the financial goal is going to be really blown out of the water this year because you're a force of nature. I learned. I, I say I am the queen of pivot. I, I double my money. You know, I'm not where I want to be. But I definitely doubled my money during the pandemic, which is crazy. And also the company that I'm a director of marketing, we were able to sustain ourselves and continue to grow, which is crazy. You know, it's a personal chef service. So learned a lot. Love it. Deanna, what was the biggest win for you this year? Oh, so um, year. let's be honest. You've had a tough year, but you're I still smiling. So, <laughs> right. Um, but I think that's actually um, so. First and foremost, uh, pivoting, uh, had to learn that quickly. And especially with um, a foundation that has no money. Uh, we survived a year and a half without money and then trying to survive in, in a COVID era um, with no money was just a different, on different la landscape. Um, we did though, we ended up doing virtual classes, um, about 20 kids per session through the summer. We had about four mentors that we actually was, were able to pay um, so 
donations um, came and they helped us so we could still continue to support our Latino community and our artists um, during COVID times. Um, we were able to do our Latino Arts Festival virtually. Um, it was a huge success uh, with, again, no funding, uh, no money. Uh, didn't know how we were gonna pull this off like that, but just an amazing group of people who have passion and drive that also support our community and support the work that we're doing and wanna aspire, you know, inspire kids and, and just anyone. Uh, we made it happen for 30 days, 45 artists, um, including all types of um, interviews about our culture, um, dancing, food. It was pretty fantastic. Um, but my biggest thing, and it's not an accomplishment, but it's definitely, um, where I see my 2021 and beyond going is that um, you don't realize who has your back until something tragic happens to you. And I didn't realize um, how many people love me, support me, and um, are there for me until you know I lost my mom and my brother. And um, just the simple texts, just the simple messages, just even the cards that I got, um, just showed how many people are like, you got this, we're here for you. Like you cry, scream, do whatever you need to do, but I know you have a community of people behind you. So going into um, the months now, you know, I am striving to be that better person for so many people um, and do and give just like they gave to me. And just know anyone out there listening, um, I started Midwest Chicana in a COVID I uh, had no idea how to be a business person um, for yeah. profit, and I still don't. Um, but I was in uh, Strawberry Swing, and I made money, and I had a support from my amazing cousin Ramona um, Ferris, who helped me get there. And you know, you can do it. You can do it. Um, it can happen, and uh, you just have to have that passion and drive to do it, and you can get there. So um, I just hope everyone uh, takes their dreams in 2021 and makes them happen for sure. I think you've also been a pretty strong face for uh, the Latinx community. It's, uh, we don't see as many. We don't get to see as many Latina faces. Uh, I know sometimes even on this show, we wish, that's why I want you to send us everyone you know. <laughs> but I just don't think we get to see as many. And I think that you've really, uh, kind of like everybody on this show, I've been watching online, right? People have been gravitating towards that because you've been really authentic and really uh, showcasing parts of your community a lot of us don't get to see. Yeah, and um, I think just like um, Dee said, you know, being authentic, being yourself, um, I'm just me, you know, this back here, our community of artists that I support um, that are in my community and, and uh, don't have um, degrees in art, or, but they've been doing this fantastic work forever and nobody knows about them, you know, or they, sh they should. And um, I'm just me. And so when you come on to my live or you see me out and it's a grocery store, you're going to get the same person. Um, and I, I'm just here to support. So my biggest thing in 2021 is definitely getting that connecting piece, um, making sure that all Latinx people in Kansas City have a platform and are seen and heard um, and get that moment and get that time to be able to push their, their dreams forward. And Claudia says she can't wait for the next Latino Arts Festival. The people, the art, the food, the food's good. Yeah, the food. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing job. All right. Well, we have an all women show and you know, that means we got to bring Wendy on. So what we're going to do is we're, we love when Wendy pops into the show once a week, we're going to bring Wendy on and then Kiana, you can answer a question as soon as it's done. We'll go in the same row. This is your last chance to get your question in. Cause I've already got questions over there. So if you think I'm going to like your question, put it in there and we'll get, we'll, we'll ask everyone. Cause we'll probably only have, room for one or two more questions, so pop it in. But here's Miss Wendy Reynolds, the CEO of Bank of Blue Valley. How would others define your communication style? Um, I think probably, um, <laughs> I, I don't know about all communication styles. Wow, this is great on LinkedIn. Um, I think for me, it is authentic, being authentic. I think we all know how to be very successful in communication, building a business, building a brand, all those different things that our capacities and sectors want of us. I think for me, it's just that relationship piece um, that allows me to uh, be my best self and then be my best self for others. Um, if I don't know you, that's it's kind of weird, <laughs> um, right? We're seeing that in COVID, how Yes, it's great to meet people, but I think it helps when you authentically want to make those connections. And so I think that is my love language, um, as Wendy would say. 
<laughs> I would also say passionate, caring, and strong. Okay. <laughs> What's well, got <Yeah>. it? <laughs> <laughs> How about you, Katie? Um, well, probably on the social media and with my heart when I'm communicating passionate um but when i'm communicating with all the makers like how they need to do things very detailed i've been told thank you for all the details you sent us we know exactly what to do maybe i talk too much but i want to make sure that you know when you're managing more than 100 people you don't want to have to like see a bunch of emails come back so you try and be as in-depth and detailed as you can be so that you don't have a lot of questions come back. So I think a lot of people say I'm detailed and hopefully I am sharing a lot of facts. Um, you know, I, I try and make sure that I share a lot of social justice, racial justice, all kinds of things on my timeline personally too. And I have educated a lot of people who didn't know certain things about truth or about, you know, the history of Kansas City or anything else. I try and make sure that people are learning from me too when I communicate, not just post a, you know, news article and say, here it is, but just kind of explain why it matters, you know? You and Scott can get together on your detailed emails because he's using okay. over a hundred people yeah. to do for events. So. I've also in the history. Heard the email I just over. sent, line four, sentence two. <laughs> yeah, I'm excited about Aaron. Uh, do, we gotta have the someone asked a really good question. I don't know if. D but we're not done with Wendy's question. We're gonna come back to those. But let's go ahead and pop this one in while you're talking about your communication style. What is the title of Dee's book again? What is <laughs> your communication style? Oh, that, that's a good one. So someone said to me in an argument, I think you're very passive aggressive. And I giggled because they thought it was an insult, but I actually found it very <laughs> complimentary. Compliment. Yeah. So, <laughs> well, back in compliment. Right, right, right. So I took that title and I, <laughs> I took that compliment and turned it into the title of my book. It called, it's called Passive Aggressive. 20 ways to make income passive aggressively. So thanks to that person <laughs> for trying to check me. Um, they helped me. And uh, my communication style, forgive me. I know we're all being our best selves, but anyone who's around me, they probably, I have defined my communication style as a uh, clatchet. It's a little bit of classy and a little bit of ratchetness in there and it's just combined. <laughs> Um, I work with a lot of men, so I have to bring feminine energy and aggressiveness as well. So it's a lot of coaching, a lot of compassion, and a lot of mothering, but then it's a lot of hard hitting too. So clatch it. Is clatch it. Amazing. <laughs> I like Classy that. Ratchet. Scott, when's the last time you used the word ratchet? I never have. I uh <laughs> <laughs> when you talk about working with, I, I, uh, my, my superpower is I work with working moms because if you want something done, ask a busy, busy person. And so I have to bring uh, that nature uh, and have guy time on the weekends because all my Ooh. partners are women. So I, uh, I, uh, oh. uh, it's a, it's a uh, unique thing when you said you work with all men, you got to bring, got to bring the, got to bring masculine the energy. Yeah. Yeah, men are horrible listeners, just FYI. Oh, God, yeah. You got to check yeah. them. You, gotta, you, you weren't listening. Yeah. yeah. And that's a whole you other have, podcast segment. That yeah. is a whole other podcast. I have found that you have to curse with men. So. Well, you can't oh, curse yeah. with show. I would never. But. <laughs> Deanna, what is your communication style? I feel like you're so nice. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, well, thank you. <laughs> um, but um, when you, D, when you said that, it actually reminded me, um, ours in our Chicano community is kind of classy, kind of chola. So you get a little bit of classy, you get a little bit of chola, and that is definitely who I am. Um, so I'm, I'm very passionate, and I'm, I'm a huge storyteller. So if you get me going and I communicate with you, I'm going to be telling you story about something, whether it has to do with me or anyone I know. Um, it's definitely... Um, so important for me to uh, have you in the moment and to hopefully um, have you at the end of our conversation understanding um, who I am and you know what it is that we're trying to aim for or, or work for. Um, but I have been called uh, too passionate and uh, too uh, driven and um, I need to shut up. 
a lot of times. So <laughs> I have not shut up since then and probably talked more, but um, I've used, I'm now using TikTok, which I absolutely love. Um, really saw that as my kids type of thing, but it's actually moved my um, earring business to somewhere I would not have thought anyone would buy from, but mm -hmm. it has been a huge way for me to get myself out there who I am authentically um, and in a fun way. Cause I'm really, I really am a fun, like I love laughing. I love um, just being in good moments. So that's kind of where my communication is. I love it. Um, Scott, do you have any questions? Otherwise I'm going to ask a couple over here. No, I'd love for you to ask questions and Aaron, you're doing a wonderful job as I'm distracting and you're keeping everyone on track, but I, uh, uh, you know, with D and D and I, th I thought it was really good that, uh, you, I think I caught a little bit of people motivating you that, um, you know, sometimes tell you that you can't do something. Oh, uh, Kiana, yeah. I don't know you that well, but I know, uh, I think one of Kiana and Aaron, Aaron's superpowers is one of the things that people motivate them and then they go, I don't want to say, uh, I, I was going to say kick their butt, but they, they, they surpass them with their work ethic. So, I, uh, I'm excited to get to know you in the future because you, it seems that you just outwork people and uh, and win. And so that's really exciting. So I, uh, I I think it's a subject for all another time. But Aaron, what, what questions are you interested in you asking know, from the audience? What they were kind of talking about, I put this on my LinkedIn earlier today and it's kind of funny. People are kind of slowly starting to like it. You like it all my likes right away. And it, it was a tweet from a man and it said, is she being rude or have you been socially conditioned into believing that women should be warm, positive and friendly at all times and are uncomfortable when they don't adhere to those behaviors? Mm. And I thought, usually as a high achieving woman, you get some of that. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So you guys really uh -huh. let into that. Uh, Scott, I think, has really narrowed this down here to work with all women, though, because he gets a lot. He's he's everywhere. I'm like, how are you everywhere? He's like this partner, this partner, this partner. So listen up. Work, baby. Work, work, working moms. It's, 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 it's the secret power. Well, so, one of the things I wanted to ask, this isn't really a question, but I want to pivot it, pivot it into a question. Christine, who watches the show all the time, says so many women need that book. Okay, but then up here she said, so she's going to get your book. But then up here she said she loves selling jewelry. That's her side hustle. She adores it. How, if somebody like Christine or Deanna, like they're in this and they're trying to figure out new ways and they're creative, Katie, how do they get involved with somebody like you to kind of take their stuff to the next level? Ooh. So they can follow me on, well, what they can do is follow Strawberry Swing. And like if Christine wants to be on Shop Local KC, which we're going to really start, I'm right now working with someone, um, a few people actually to rebrand. So basically when I did that pivot and got an eight magazine, I just went onto Canva. You all know what Canva is, right? It's like kind of the free way you can kind of become a graphic designer yourself. And it's been a godsend for me because I have to make graphics quickly a lot. And I just kind of pick something and I know how to do WordPress. And so I made a WordPress site. It's just not uber professional. And so I'm actually working with a female company to rebrand Shop Local KC. But right now you can get on Shop Local KC. There's like a contact us button on it and we can put her on there. Deanna will already be on there because she was part of Holiday Swing. That was something that I did. I put them all on there. Um, but I have not announced my future craft show dates yet for 2021 because I'm still working on that. COVID, you know, this pandemic we're going through. I'm just a little nervous to go indoors. Um, even though we can be masked, I'm just, ner I don't know. It just worries me. I would hate to be like Typhoid Mary where they're like, I went to this craft show and everyone got COVID. I know it's not funny, but I'm just scared. Sh you know, I just don't want to do that. So I don't know when, um, if I'll be able to do another show in person until it's warmer out. Um, but I have some other things up my sleeve. Like I'm going to be announcing a Valentine's gift box soon where uh, you can order a curated everything, literally everything made in Kansas City box for a man, a woman, um, a kid, uh, expecting mom, you know, your boyfriend, whoever. Um, and so that's my next big thing where that's how I can support the makers by not having a pop up. So Christine, just get on that shop local site. It's like, I think $16 a month or something. I can't remember off the top of my head right now for the first listing. But we'll do a gift box that'll be curated that we might put like Deanna's earrings might be awesome in the for the mom one or whatever. I don't so know. Go, go to the website. 
It's another pivot of mine. I don't have it all planned yet, but I will. The Kansas City Business Journal needs to feed the Kansas City Business Journal watches the show a lot. I, have they featured you in connecting Kansas City? No. They I'm should not. definitely, definitely do that. I don't want to. Aaron's got more questions. We only have 10 minutes. So no, I just love the poll that we pull sometimes on here. Next week we'll see. <laughs> it's happened before. So I, I wanted to get over here to Deanna because she kind of said that. Deanna, the first thing you said, and I'm just so confused, is you said, I'm unemployed, but boom, 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 boom. At what point does this become your employment? Oh, gosh, that's what we've been working on for about two and a half years, three years. Um, that is our biggest goal for 2021 is to say I am the CEO founder and Latino Arts Foundation. We haven't made the official announcement announcement yet, but um, the Latino Arts Foundation is going to dissolve and we are going to become the Chicano Art and Cultural Center of Kansas City, the first mm -hmm. Chicano Art Center community center um, here. And we're going to continue the art mentorship and the festival through that. But uh, alongside that, it's going to be a lot of entrepreneurs entrepreneur, um, Latino entrepreneurs in pods, um, including the Midwest Chicana brand. So that is what we're working on for 2021. And I'm hoping by the end of 2021, I can say that I am actually employed through uh, the Chicano Art and Cultural Center of Kansas City. And so how do people, if they want to be involved, how do they get a hold of you? And, and what are you looking to be able, like, what do you need to make that into your dream? Yeah, so actually we have an advisory committee right now. We have um, eight people that were part of our brainstorming session in 2020. Um, we just completed that in December. And so in in February of 2021, we're gonna go move forward. And so if you wanna become part of the advisory committee, please email me. I'm at mmunzmarie at gmail.com. I know it's complicated. I can put it in the comments, <laughs> um, but uh, just email me and we'd love to have you in your voice and be a part of this. Um, a lot of people didn't know what we were working on uh, in 2020. So um, I'm hoping that more people will know in 2021 and uh, be a voice. Uh, let us know what we need to do. Uh, this is not our center. It is the community center. So without you, it won't be um, what is needed. So we need everyone's voice in it. And as business people watching the show, if you are not paying attention to the Latino community, it is the fastest growing community. And you, if, if nothing else, there's a numbers game going on right here, right? Like it is such a fast growing community. I don't know why more people don't pay attention. Aaron, I'm asking the same question on every single uh, show I've been on. I'm like, when's the last time you interviewed a Latino or Latinx person and everybody is sitting there in silence? And I'm like, I, I, I can t give you 10 people right now that should be sitting here or should be interviewed or anything. And nobody knows. Um, it's, it's, it feels, it's very, it feels very weird and wrong. Uh, especially in 2020 in Kansas City, that it should not, we should not be in this space as we are right now. For I history you? nerds, there's a lot of great podcasts uh, on the history of Kansas City historically for the last hundred years of the Latino community building Kansas City. Mm -hmm. So if you ever Google Guadalupe centers, especially yeah. and podcasts, it's a wonderful history of, of Kansas City and the Latino community. And then also one of our former guests, Drew Ains, who was the former president of recent Centurions class, he, along with the Sutherland Foundation, will be investing $6 million in the next three years in minority-owned businesses, $1 million in 2021, $2 million in 2022, and $3 million in 2023. So we'll be making sure to connect the dots with, with our uh, businesses here in town and making sure that we're doing a good job connecting like Katie does and many of our other uh, uh, guests do. And uh, Guadalupe Centers are my cousins. So we have a connection there. Maddie Rhodes, Jenny Mendez is my cousin. So our big, huge community is full of family and friends that we've known a very, very long time, but we still cannot seem to get past this. Where who who's, are the, you? who's the executive director? I have a crush on the person because I've, I've heard for like 15 years, <laughs> they've just been running. It's a he, they've been running. He's Chris been running. Medina. What's his name? Chris Medina. Wow, yes. Yeah. Wow. I, I'm a, I'm a big fan just listening from what he's done from afar. Pretty yeah. impressive. You know, I'm going to like email him after here to get it on here. Just so I can <laughs> you, need to, you need to, we need to see him more. Absolutely. Yeah. He's a big, I mean, so what, what he's done in the community is a big deal. I'll tell you one thing with the Latino community, we're very humble people. We don't talk about what we do. We just do our work. And that's been a huge mm -hmm. problem. Uh, a, a huge hill I'm trying to get over because especially with social media, um, me even talking about I was on Queer Eye is something that my family just hates. Like, it's like, 
why just do your work just do it in, in silence and make it happen and that's just how we've always done it and not that that's a bad thing but unless we speak about it the future latino latinx community will not see or hear from people that look like them and are doing great things and if we keep ourselves in silence they're not going to have anyone to look up to or mentor with or talk to and i didn't have that i i when i started i had nobody I didn't know anybody, I, you know, um, Guadalupe was doing its own thing. You didn't really reach out. You just kind of just, you did your own thing. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't need to be that way. Uh, we should be sharing uh, with our communities. Well, I tell everyone you are on Queer Eye. I'm very proud of you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> just hang out with me. I'll just keep telling people everyone. I know. <laughs> Nana, I think it's also hard for us because we're both in arts orgs, like with Truth Market Collective. Yeah. What people, like you and I have talked about this before, it seems that we get passed up for like grants and stuff for organizations that have already received the same grants over and over and over. But it's hard because we just started these, you know, with our love and our passion. And then there's no, we have to get the people that can put all of our info together. Like it's hard. Like I'm learning now with my own business, how I can show these stats of like, Kim C spent $1.2 million at my makers fair. Like that's a big deal. That's a stat. Like we have to be able to figure out how art matters and show people that it really, really matters. And people want to look at these formulas to fund you. And that's really hard when you're in an arts organization like we're trying to be because people don't look at us as like entrepreneurs, but we are, we make up like 70% of all entrepreneurs are like micro artists, makers, that kind of thing. So I think that's been a big hill for you and I, and we yeah. aren't funded either with True Smirk yet. We're, yeah. we're trying to hire an executive director from um, a person of color from the community because my, Chrissy and I have done everything, you know, unpaid because of course we don't want to get paid. We want to follow our mission and vision and it's been, we need to get funded though. But first we have to have all this data and then how do we have data? All of that. It's just so hard. Well, I'll tell you one thing that's really been successful and, and needed is art therapy. Um, that was one of the yeah. things that happened in the summer. And actually the kids that were part of that program and some kids that heard about it are now doing art therapy uh, on the side. Wow. Uh, and I actually have my own child in it and it is phenomenal. And that is a huge way, especially during COVID and the times that we're in right now and art therapy has gotten through me. That's what I'm doing my earrings for. It's my therapy. Yep. It's my piece. It's my, yep. it's my, how I get through things. Yep. And how is that not important? Yeah. You know, I mean, we need I to be literally funding. Just got this text. I'm going to read it to you all. It made me cry from one of my makers that said, she sent me this today. Katie, just want to say thank you so much for all you've done and continue to do for us makers. I know it must have been a very daunting task to find ways to have in-person events while keeping everyone safe. Your passion, ingenuity, is that how you say that word? Ingenuity, ingenuity, and countless hours of ingenuity. <laughs> the Saturday pop-ups in the holiday markets not only saved me financially, but also mentally. They provided some normalcy to this year and gave me renewed purpose. Blah, blah, blah. You know, like, it's a huge deal. How do we measure that impact? Mm -hmm. You guys just pivoted us into our very last question because we have three minutes left. Okay, so I'm gonna give a I'm gonna give you the hardest task I've given you all one all day. You have to answer this with one word. You guys think you can do it? Think we can get through the look in Scott's face. He's like, I don't know if we're gonna be able to do it. In terms of motivation, what word drives you? Kiana, let's start with you. Great question, Mary. Good job, Mary. Uh, one word. <laughs> um I would say my one word would be poverty. That's what drives you every day. I would say for majority and where you look at where I've come from and the life that I've lived, not because that was just your whole entire life, but you know, it's very rare and uncommon for someone like me to be where I am. So yeah, but that's, that's healthy, but it's not healthy. But I think to, to Deanna's point, she talked about who else is going to drive that narrative. And so the more we talk about it, the more we're able to, I guess, educate the next generation and others that are coming after us. Right. Katie, what's your one word? Um, it would probably be community. I really hate, I feel like in this world, what we're in right now, everyone's so individualistic. And I just wish, I try my hardest to make sure that we are all a community in everything I do you know, that we're all together helping each other and not just thinking of the individual so much. Dee, what's your word? Time. I do have an explanation. <laughs> you just stuck to the word. You said one word. One word. One word. One word. Literal. Like I am literal. My one word time is because I wasted a lot of time putting other people first. And so I wake up every day 
or every week with the idea that I can use this time to impact my family so much. And I got to, I can't leave this earth. And I watched my father work for 40 years and end up with nothing and never took a trip, a vacation or nothing. He just worked himself to death. Mm. So time motivates me to change. Mm. I love that. Deanna? Oh, D, that hurt me right there. That's my dad, my mom. That's like family. <laughs> two years for me. Two years for yeah. me. I know. Yes. Um, so I have uh, first a, a kind of a good word and a kind of a not so good. So access, because we all need access and then we all have the ability to give access in some way, some form. So that's my motivator. So just finding that access and giving it out. And then gatekeeper. Um, I have been told many times by leaders now that I am now a gatekeeper, which hurts my heart because I hate the word gatekeeper and I hate gatekeepers. But if I'm a gatekeeper, I'm opening that damn gate for everybody and everyone. Um, and uh, that's going to be my motivation is to ensure that that gate stays open and is uh, broken down forever. All right. I'm going to show uh, we're at time. This was amazing. I want to show a couple quick comments real quick. Told you it was going to be hard to do after last week, but you guys nailed it. Yay. Amazing. Um, it, wow. it was amazing discussion. And all of you guys have compliments over in the, uh, from your friends over in the comments. So go make sure you check those out. Scott. Aaron, what is your yeah. word? Oh, I wasn't ready for all of that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, my motivation is just my, my kids, right? Different, it's kind of same right. on a different lifestyle and making sure that they understand the time, that they understand community, that they under, like, kind of everybody's words, just my kids. Like, how about you, Scott? Uh, well, thank you, Davin. Davin does a lot of amazing work and in investing in great organizations. And I hope people know going and, and, and every, the impact that he's making. <laughs> um, I just think the one word for uh, this panel, in my mind that I felt today was strength. I don't ever want to get on the bad side of anyone here because you are going to outwork your competition and you're going to beat them. And so to me, that is strength. And, and, and I think people fear strength because uh, they, they want, they, they don't want you to beat them. And so I, I just think the force of nature and everything that you all created in 2020, I want to ride in your wake because Yay. 2021 with all the work you've put in, I think it's going to be a little bit of a downhill run. Uh, based upon everything you did. But Aaron, thank you so much for running an amazing show. And to Bank of Blue Valley for being our sponsor, I feel very lucky to be your partner. So what do you want to do to wrap us up? I, I just want to say thank you to our panel. Continue to watch every week. We're going every Tuesday for the all of 2021. I wish we would have started earlier in 2020. Make sure you connect with each woman here. They are all tagged over there. And make sure you connect. And you really, they are making some incredible, incredible strides in our community. Thank you all so much for coming on. And uh, we will see you next week when I can no longer use my see you next year joke. <laughs> Thank you so much.